Good morning. My name is Leslie Jones. I'm going to be graduating from Duluth High School and attending George Mason University in the fall. I have always had a very strong sense of faith growing up. I didn't, ha I didn't really have any family, but I had faith, and for a long time, that was all I needed. But when I moved here to live with my granddad, I found out what it was like to be a part of something. I was a part of a community, a family that taught me more about myself than any book or classroom could have taught me. I remember my first Sunday here. I had never seen so many warm and smiling faces, but those faces let me know that I was home and that I was safe. In Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10, it says, For by God's grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of work so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. To read those words is one thing, but to feel God's grace through this church family is a feeling that just can't be put into words. I can happily say that every good or bad event that has happened in the past 17 years not only made me a stronger person, but strengthened my faith as well. And when I leave for college, I know that I'm well prepared because of the things I have learned from my biggest influences. From my granddad, I learned how to be a strong leader. From school, I learned how to be successful. From my friends, I learned how to be opinionated. But from the people in this church, I have learned how to be courageous, outgoing, and ambitious. This church taught me there is nothing a prayer and a piece of cake can't fix. I know my faith journey is over, but I couldn't think of a better place to start. Good morning, my name is Frances Hobley. I will be graduating from Denmark High School in four days and I will then be attending the University of Georgia in the fall. I've been going to church at DUMC since I was two years old. I grew up in the preschool, children's choir, Sunday school, and youth. We knew this place was special when my preschool teacher, Ms. Porwall, invited me over to remake my entire preschool scrapbook, which was quite challenging, after our house burned down in 2002, as well as the entire church community reaching out and giving us clothes, toys, food, and more. From then, I spent every Wednesday night with Miss Cindy in children's choir, where I met some of my best friends I have to this day. Sunday mornings were spent coloring Bible stories, watching parents dress up to play out scenes, and learning the Bible basics. And summers were spent at VBS, learning every song and dance move possible. As I graduated from the children's ministry into youth, I knew I had found a family. Stephen and Karen treated us as their own as we learned Christian aerobics and learned every hand motion to every song. I went on five choir tours where we went to Washington, D.C., drove to Canada, South Carolina, North Georgia, North Carolina, and St. Augustine. We sang at retirement homes, children's homes, on the beach of Lake Ontario, baseball games, and even on the steps of the Charleston Customs Building. Some fond memories were shared, like playing hide-and-go-seek with an unknowing chaperone in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, going to Williamsburg instead of Bush Gardens, visiting Niagara Falls, ziplining over an alligator farm, the famous talent shows that would last for hours on end, and just spending time driving from place to place on the buses. Mr. Lambat came and we began to sing songs in other languages and watch in awe as he somehow lifted various objects on his face. When Lame came, I knew he was special by the noises he could make, like the call of freedom or the armadillo, and because he claimed to have attended the famous all-girls school in, in Alabama called Harvard. You may be wondering now what exactly we do in youth, but everything, but all I can say is the entire youth group is my family and everything I've learned has changed me for the better. I would like to thank Stephen, Karen, Nick, Brittany, Alan, Mr. Lambeck, Michelle, Andrew, Ms. Bass, and Lane for helping me grow spiritually for the past six years. When my mom asked, when my mom and Ms. Hudson asked if Grace and I would rather do a duet with some singing and piano or speak in front of the church, I had to say a hard pass to both. But when Lane asked me if I would speak, I had to say yes. When he said it was a testimony, I wasn't sure I would say exactly. A testimony has a deeper connotation behind it for me, and I think of it as some big faith experience. I've never spoken to any of the Vespers that I have heard because I never thought my story was interesting enough to share. My faith story is a simple one. I have gone to church my whole life, and in sixth grade, I gave my life over to Christ on the Lake Junaleska trip um, on top of the hill with the lit cross. It seemed easy enough at the time, and that's what I thought my story was. That's the thing, though. I thought it was over. I would just continue to go to church, and there would be not much more to add. As I came to church every Sunday, I would listen to the sermons, but not really apply them to my life. I never did anything differently when I walked out of the doors. My life was one big normal routine, and I was totally fine with that. I would talk to the usual people and do the usual activities, no interruptions, no differences. I was living my life with no intention of changing it from my comfortable zone. I joined the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, or FCA, at my school, and that became a routine as well. So what does routines have to do with anything? 
Well, this winter, FCA offered to send all the seniors to the Passion Conference. For those of you who don't know what the Passion Conference is, it's an annual event where all the young adults between 18 and 25 come and worship and listen to speakers and sing a lot. So when FCA offered this, my mom was all over me to go, but it wasn't really part of my routine, worshiping with 20,000 other Christians. So after some arguing and bribing, I reluctantly agreed to go. All I can say was, a tr was it was truly amazing, and I would not redo that weekend for anything. The speakers were inspirational, the songs were outstanding, and the people were amazing. We had to break into family groups with people we had never met before. Those people, my new family, opened up to me more than some, more than some people I'm close with now. It amazed me how they weren't uncomfortable, or as my family claims my favorite word is, awkward. One of the girls I met said life-changing things happen when you put yourself out there and get uncomfortable. That uncomfortable feeling is letting go and truly letting God take over. I left passion vowing to start being uncomfortable and trying those awkward things like speaking in front of the church on Youth Sunday. Next year is a new start and I want God to control every minute of it. In the verse Luke 11 verses 9 through 10, Jesus says, And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Without getting out there and experiencing your faith and what God has planned for you, nothing will change from your daily routine that you control. So here I am with everyone as my witness saying, ready to be awkward, and I'm ready to experience awkward and uncomfortable moments if it means fulfilling God's plan for me. I'd like to thank my entire family, the Basses, the Connollys, the Scotts, the Hudsons, the Carneses, the Fymans, and the Fortenberries, as well as many others of my amazing friends for making me the person I am today. I'd like to give a special thank you to Lane for teaching me what I need to know about God and Christianity and how it's okay to ask questions because finding the answers helps you grow in your personal faith. We are also sad to see you leave, but you will love your new church and they will love you as much as we have at DUMC. We will also miss playing our weekly trivia with you and hashtag hashtag will never be the same. I'm still very much a work in progress and I can't wait to see what he has in store for me. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Will Bass, and I'm a senior at Dominion High School and will, will be attending Auburn University in the fall. Dominion United Methodist has played a big role in who I am today. From nursery with Miss Dot, preschool, and all the adults who taught Sunday school through my elementary school years, and choir with Miss Cindy. Confirmation to the youth program with Stephen, Lane, Brittany, Andrew, Alan, Michelle, and my mother. The people in this church have made a tremendous impact on my life. As a sixth grader, I went to Camp Iwanata in the foothills of South Carolina on my first youth retreat. There have been many more, but at that retreat, a group of older teens from Greenville really had an impact on my thinking. I didn't then and don't still agree with everything I heard from them, but it helped me start on a path of believing, questioning, and truly seeking God in my life. I have been blessed to go on seven mission trips with DUMC to rural Tennessee, downtown Charleston, South Carolina, Florida, uh, Southern Puerto Rico, the Blackfoot Indian Reservation on the Canadian border. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, City of Refuge in downtown Atlanta and we'll be going to the Methodist Bahamas Habitat on the island of Eleuthera in a few weeks. I've seen God working in so many lives through the people who we served and the people I've served alongside. It has been a reminder for me of the simple lessons I learned in Sunday school as a young kid. Jesus came to earth to teach us to love our neighbor all of our neighbors. Thank you to each and every one of you for your support I have received from Dona United Methodist Church. Thank you. And we'll be hearing a few more of those in just a few minutes as well. In preparation for our gospel reading, will you please stand? My name is Brock Slabus, and everybody seems to be saying their college, so I will too. Uh, Florida State, go Knowles. <laughs> All right, so really what this church has meant to me, uh, one word comes to mind, friendship. A real group of friends is hard to come by. A group of friends that no matter what you do or say, they will put it behind them and stay with you through the thick and thin, through the rough and calm waters, and through the happiest and best times of your life. The ones that if you feel left out will make you be included. Or the ones that will teach you something that you might not have known before. A good friend once told me, friendships are like diving boards. 
You are scared to jump off at first. You do not know how the water will feel or what lies below. The thing is though, sooner or later, all fear is gone and you just go for it. You jump. Whether this jump was at age five or at age 10, you just jump. You want to jump again and again, feeling that wind rush through your hair right before you hit the water. Now, what, what does this all have to do with friendships? The water is the other person, full of mystery and suspense. You have to put all your trust in a person you just met and go for it. Sometimes the water might be too cold, or sometimes you land in not the best ways and it doesn't turn out well, but that is life. Sometimes not everything is perfect and some friends won't be the best friends, but we get through it. We paddle every way possible to get to the side of the pool, get out, shake it off, and jump again. This not only applies to friendships, but it applies to my faith. Putting your trust in what is above, the great unknown, something you cannot see, but believe that is there. Something that will catch you after death. Something that comforts you when you're sad. And something that guides you to truth when you drift off. That something is God. Putting your faith in God is putting your faith in the water. Yes, there will be challenges, and yes, there will be times when you just want to climb down that ladder and, ladder and succumb to that fear. But you have to keep pushing, jumping, and letting that air rush through your hair. Now, you have to really persevere through the hardships, the tough friendships, and know that there will always be a friend that can help you get out of that pool and keep trying. Now, I'll leave you with this verse, Luke 11, 5 through 13, from the New International Version. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no other food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I have gone to bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Grace Hudson, and I'm a senior at Dunwoody High School, and I will be attending Auburn University this fall, much to the dismay of my dad, who might be the biggest Georgia Bulldog fan that I know, but War Eagle. So when Lane asked me to speak about how the church has influenced my faith, I knew exactly one word that summed it up, and that's family. The definition of the word family, according to dictionary.com, is a basic social unit consisting of parents and their children, considered as a group, whether dwelling together or not. And I think that's exactly what you can find here at DUMC. I participated in so many different parts of what this church has to offer, and every single member here makes your faith journey effortless with their love and support. I'm so incredibly blessed to have role models here at church who have molded me into the Christian that I have become. Now I want to talk about how I got to this point in my faith. I'm kind of loud and outgoing, and I've always been very headstrong, and it's hard for me to open up to new ideas, especially things that involved my relationship with God. And it seems like every year, students come up and talk about how they had that one defining moment where they knew Jesus. And I like to think my story is a bit different. I've been going to this church for as long as I can remember, and I've always had someone guiding me and helping me figure out what God has in store for me. Whether that was my Sunday school teacher giving me the lesson, Robert Edwards, Miss Cindy, and Mark Lambach helping me pursue my dreams on stage, or Lane, Andrew, and Alan knowing exactly what to say to a group of teenagers who did not want to wake up early and go to church that morning. The youth group here at DUMC is particularly amazing because it has the power to bring teenagers together to worship, which is sometimes hard to find when we're finding ourselves. But it has built the foundation of faith in my life. Each and every person who has encouraged me or motivated me to help find God and having my own family as well as my church family has helped me to be someone I can be proud of, someone that I hope can inspire others to seek God's glory and be his disciples the way my family has for me. 
So I don't think I've ever had that sudden shock where it all seemed to make sense at one time in my life. And I don't know that it will ever completely make sense. But despite all of the hard times I've had throughout my journey so far, I know that God has a plan for each of us and he will never forsake us. To remind myself of that, I read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The people who have raised me and always been there to pick me up when I couldn't seem to find my faith are just proof of God's love. I believe that growing up at DUMC has only helped me strengthen that love for God and helped me spread that love to others. Because of that support and help from Steve Fortenberry, I have helped lead a small group of high school girls to guide them through their faith, as well as being able to sing at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes every Friday morning at Dunwoody High School, all to go and tell others about who we are as Christians. And even as I move on to a new chapter in my life, I know that God will be there with me every single step of the way. And I'm so thankful for everything that this congregation has done for all of the seniors because we have just taken the first step into the rest of our lives. And wherever that may take me, I want to live that alongside my family and my God. Thank you. Well, I, I, I hope that you have been as inspired as I have been uh, this morning. And, and just to let you know, these are a 